Did you know that Miles' father actually won't die in Beyond the Spider-Verse? That's right, you heard it right here folks. Miles' dad won't die from the canon event. In Across the Spider-Verse, we learn that Miles' dad is going to die because it's canon. At least that's what Miguel says. And more than half the movie is Miles trying to save his dad. But what if I told you he didn't need to save his dad because he was never going to die in the first place? This is because Miles was never supposed to be Spider-Man. It was Miles G. Morales that was supposed to be bit by the spider. Yeah, that guy from Earth-42 at the end of Across the Spider-Verse. That's why Miles G. Morales' father is dead in that universe, even though he is in Spider-Man. While this is probably one of the more dumber theories in this video, be sure to stick around because they are going to get better. My second theory is that Miles Morales is going to give up his power as Spider-Man in Beyond the Spider-Verse, and he's going to give the spider power to Miles G. Morales who was supposed to have it in the first place. This way, the canon event of Miles' father dying won't happen, and Miles G. Morales won't be affected by this since his father is already dead. And you may be wondering, if this happens, there's gonna be no one to protect Miles' Earth. Well, he could always adapt the ways of his Uncle Aaron and be the Prowler, but be good. I mean, that was always supposed to be his destiny until he met Peter Parker in this scene. So I think it would be a really good ending for Miles Morales to turn into the Prowler to show how much he's grown. My third theory is kind of a question theory. Does the Spot know Spider-Man's real identity? Because in this scene, when the Miles and Spot share a vision, at the end, the Spot says, it's a vision of their future, and the Spot is going to take everything away from Miles, just like Miles took everything away from him. And from this scene, you could imagine he's going to kill his parents, probably his friends, and in the vision, there's actually a scene of Miles' dad saving someone from the rubble. And right after the vision ends, Miles can be seen sad. So does this mean that Spot made a connection between one and one, that Spider-Man's father is the police chief, because Miles was so sad when the police chief died? And another thing that could support that the Spot actually knows Spider-Man's identity is because when they were battling before at Alchemix, Miles' father and Spider-Man had a relationship that one could describe as father and son. The fourth theory is on why Hobie respects Mayday, Peter B. Parker's daughter, so much. So we all know that Hobie is a big believer in doing things your own way. And I would say it's his unofficial motto, is inconsistency. That's why Hobie hates and disapproves of Miguel's theory on canon events. Because that would mean every spider person has no choice and has to do what's set out for them. Which Hobie obviously hates, since he quits th being in the spider society. But what does this have to do with Mayday, you might say? Well, Mayday is the result of Peter going against canon. The canon of his whole life being destroyed, but with the help of Miles, he was able to rebuild it, and Mayday was the result of this. So that means Mayday is an anomaly, just like Miles. This is also the same reason why Miles is so loved by Hobie. It's because Miles himself is an anomaly, and proof that canon events aren't real. My next theory is on why Miguel's discovery about canon events is fake. I mean, at this point, a couple of months after the release of Across the Spider-Verse, I think we all figured out that this canon event thing is just mumbo-jumbo from Miguel. But in case you're still on the edge of this, here's another piece of evidence. When Miguel is explaining about when he broke canon, this video plays, and the video shows what's happening when canon is broken. It shows people disintegrating. But if we go back to the movie to Mumbatton, after Miles saves Inspector Singh, therefore disrupting canon, we see there's no disintegration happening. There's actually a black hole sort of figure forming, much like Spot's black holes. This is completely different from what Miguel showed in this video. So what Miguel showed has to be fake. And if that didn't convince you enough, here's yet another piece of evidence. When Miguel is explaining the canon event where a police chief has to die, he mentions they die by saving a child falling into rubble. Like in Mumbatton when Inspector Singh saves the child from rubble. And during the clip where Miguel explains this, he shows a clip from The Amazing Spider-Man where Captain Stacy is dying. Yet Captain Stacy doesn't die from saving a child in rubble. He dies by the lizard when helping Spider-Man. This is yet another plot hole among many against Miguel's theory of canon events. My next theory is that Doc Ock is going to show up in the next film. No, not that one from The Spider-Man 2 but into the Spider-Verse is Olivia Octavius. This is because of this picture from the Spot's room in Across the Spider-Verse. A lot of fans theorized that the Spot and Doc Ock could have been in a romantic relationship, and since she didn't die in the events of Into the Spider-Verse, rather sent into another dimension by this train, it would make sense for the Spot to bring her back to help him destroy Miles. 
personally, I would love to see Doc Ock again because she was such a good character in Into the Spider-Verse. And now is a theory that's been confirmed by the creators of Across the Spider-Verse. So you know how Gwen was able to sense that Miles was sent to another dimension at the end of the movie? Well, a lot of people have theorized that how Gwen was able to do this, even though she wasn't in the same dimension as him, is because they were connected. While this is no longer a theory and has been confirmed in Across the Spider-Verse's director commentary, but you might be asking, how did Gwen gain this ability in the first place? Well, to be honest, I really don't know. And what I'm about to say is probably so wrong, but I think it's the universe. It's fate itself. Why do I think this? Well, if we go back to Into the Spider-Verse, Gwen says she was blasted into the past week when she was transported from her dimension by Kingpin's Collider. And she also says that the Spider-Sense told her to go to Vision's Academy, and that's where she meets Miles. But keep in mind, Miles hasn't been bit by the spider at this point in time. It's only the night of meeting Gwen that Miles gets bit. So how does her spider sense go off when Miles hasn't even been bit by the spider? And that's not even considering the fact that he was never supposed to be Spider-Man in the first place. Personally, I feel like someone, a greater being if you will, is at control here. And everyone here are just pawns. Alright, that greater being thing is probably not right. But the real greater beings are the directors and the writers. But you get where I'm going at. And here is the cake theory. Yeah, I know the name is kind of whack, but this theory is actually really cool. So you know how Miles buys two cakes for his dad's party? Well, we can see but that by doing everything that he does as Spider-Man, at the end when he finally delivers the cakes, both of the cakes are really messed up, which shows how he's really bad at juggling his life of being Spider-Man and being Miles Morales. And it also shows that he can't handle two cakes at the same time. Which could be a reference to him wanting to save his dad, but also wanting to defeat Spot. But here's where the theory comes into play. At the end of Across the Spider-Verse, we learn that there are actually two Miles. The Miles that we've been following, Miles Morales, and the new Miles from Earth-42, Miles G. Morales. So my theory is that in order to handle the two cakes, which are Miles' father and the Spot, there are actually going to be two Mileses. So this way, the cake won't be ruined as much, since there are two Mileses to take care of the cake. And finally, I'm going to end off the video with a cool easter egg. At the start of Across the Spider-Verse, when Gwen is leaving the band, she says she hasn't quite found her band yet. And by the end of the movie in this scene, before the movie ends, she says she wasn't able to find a band, so she made her own. I think this is really cool because it shows the character development of her from the start where she was really unsure about everything and always following orders to the end where sh now she's making decisions for herself and is going to save Miles. This is the end of part 3 of Theories for Beyond the Spider-Verse, so if you enjoyed the video, be sure to check out part 1 and 2. And if you have any theories, feel free to comment them down below and I will reply to them. And the video is ending so be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.